Hey and welcome back YouTubers. Today I'm going to show you how to replace the refrigerant in a large fridge or freezer such as this and I'm going to give you detailed instructions. So hang on and let's get going. Before getting started just take the back off your fridge or freezer and check the pipes to make sure that there is no large hole or disruption and you can check for leaks by putting soap solution on the pipes. Check the heat exchanger to make sure it's not caked up in thick dust and then make sure that the fan is working. So this is what you need to do it. You need what's called a bullet piercing valve. There it is, that tiny spike, that's what pierces into the copper pipe. So you want to use an Allen wrench to roll this back so that it doesn't uh, pierce it as you're trying to put it on. So I've just rolled it back. And actually this whole thing really needs to come apart. So you'll notice two things in there. See these two adapters? These come out and these are used for different diameter pipes. Let me identify the different pipes in the back of the fridge. This is a compressor. Here's a little copper tube cutoff, which they put in probably at, manuf at manufacture as a quick way to fill it up. This one we're, we're not going to be able to use because it's it's been soldered, it's irregular and it's curved and it's very short. What we need to do is identify the low pressure side because that's where we're going to put our coolant. So the high pressure side usually goes to the heat exchanger. So here's the high pressure side which goes down and connects to this big big heat exchanger here. And then the low pressure side, which is this, goes into the freezer compartment, as you can see right there. And that's basically it. So we're gonna to wanna to put our coolant in this, in this pipe. So the adapters, you have to make sure which one will fit. So you've got this one, and you've got this bigger one, so let's try this bigger one first. It kind of fits, uh, not that well though, it's loose. Now let's, let's try the smaller one. That seems to be a much more snug fit. So next what we'll need to do is we'll need to um, file the uh, oxide off this with a piece of sandpaper. And we want to position the valve in such a way that we can access it. And we're going to use the adapters on the other end to size it right. That spike that you see there is the spike that penetrates into the copper pipe. And you want to make sure that's wound back before installing this by using the Allen key on there. So let's do that. So let's put the adapters back. So here's one of them. You want them both in there. There's your smaller one. Now, here's our pipe. So just pretend this is the inside of the fridge. There's the pipe. Now, remember you wanna have that sanded before you do this. And then we're gonna put the screws in and clamp it down on this pipe. And I'll show you the what the perforation looks like. Okay, screws are tightened down. Allen wrench turned all the way down. So it's now pierced. Now, in order to access the, the Freon in, in the pipe and to add Freon to the pipe, you have to take this little cover off like this. So you have that. And you need to check your fridge or freezer for what coolant it uses. It also tells you how much coolant is used and let me show you. And 
In most fridges or freezers, there's a label on the inside which tells you what type of coolant and how much coolant. So in this case, there it is, right there. R134A, 4.59 ounces. So this big fridge and freezer, as you can see, it doesn't take a lot of coolant to run that. Each one can comes with 12 ounces. So you weigh that can before you do this, and then you weigh it after to make sure you've got the right amount of uh, coolant in there. So what you'll need for the refill is this particular device. And this has a gauge on it. And it's got different pressure zones on the gauge. So you can know how much freon you're adding. And we're also gonna have to purge the air out of this. This has air in these pipes. So if you were to add freon, you'd add freon plus the air in this pipe. So in order to purge it, you just open the valves and let the freon flow through it for a, for a little second and then close the valves again. Both ends are not identical as I initially thought. You need an adapter, which is this, that's very important. And this adapter will only fit in one of these ends. So, just show you. You can just use hand tightness to do this. Hang on, let me see if I can do it. Oh, it does, this is the end it doesn't fit in, sorry. It fits in this end. Yeah, it goes in there perfectly. Just hand tightness is all you need. Close both the valves like this. And then this end here goes on top of your, your can of replacement gas. Before you screw your can onto your adapter, make sure that this valve is all the way back and that the needle is, the needle that opens the self-sealing valve on that can doesn't, um, protrude out. Otherwise, when you're trying to screw this on, it's going to splash free on everywhere. Okay, now we'll put our can on. Basically, just goes on like this. That's it. There you go. So this whole system is now under pressure. Now, to purge the air out of this system, open this valve here. That's all it takes. Now the air has been purged out of this pipe. Now after purging out this tubing, I just close this off so the can is no longer connected to the system. Close the valve here by turning this anti-clockwise and then we're going to vent out the freon that's in this tubing. Here it goes. So now the pressure of the freon in the tubing is at atmospheric pressure. So it'll show close to zero. Maybe a little bit trace of... There you go. Now it's atmospheric pressure. Now, now we're going to connect this to the, to the fridge. First, let me show you what we did connecting it up to our dummy piece of pipe. So here it is. This was turned all the way in. I'm actually going to remove this so that you can see the type of hole that, that it makes in the pipe. Open this up. Take the whole thing off. So let me see if you can see it right there. That's the hole that's used to introduce Freon into the freezer. Before you do anything further, find a good location to put your bullet piercing valve. So I'm going to put it right here. I've got medium sized, medium grain sandpaper here. What I'm going to do is just sand the pipe. It's looking pretty good. So here's the uh, bullet piercing valve put in place. It's a little hard to finagle with it to get it in there. You want to make sure that you can access the port here and you can access this with an allen key so you have to be creative about how you're going to position it in order to get it to work okay now i need to put the adapter so i can 
put the Freon into the system. So here's the adapter. This should fit on here like this. There it goes. Now we're gonna close the valve. We're gonna pierce the uh, pipe with this Allen key. The screw is now screwed in and the pipe is pierced. Now we're gonna measure, measure the pressure of the uh, Freon in the system with this gauge here. The pressure is at zero. Now I'm gonna open the bullet piercing valve now that this, this is connected in. We'll see the pressure of the Freon in our fridge. Here it goes. So it's real low on Freon. It should be up where that black mark is, but it's coming down here. So we're gonna fill it up. There's a needle valve in this can, which will open. Do it slowly. Don't do it all in one go to repressurize your system. And I can feel the can physically getting cold. It's almost in the green zone, so I'm gonna weigh my can to see how much weight is left in this can. Now that we're in the green zone, we need to, this valve here needs to be closed. So that is now closed. And now we're gonna to have to reseal the bullet piercing hole by turning that clockwise. The screw is now in, and then we're gonna remove this, and there'll be a slight release of Freon as we remove this. And that's what you're hearing right there. Let's, let's plug it in and see what happens. Okay, good news, the compressor started. It wasn't starting before, because the default was to not start if the pressure dropped below a certain level. Let me feel my heat exchanger coils. They're getting warm, that's a good sign. When you're done with the refill, you can put the cap on the bullet piercing valve just to keep dust out of it. So there it goes. So here's what a, a full can weighs, 422 grams. And here's what the can weighs after I put in the uh, coolant. It's 300 grams, so about uh, 120 grams went in there. Um, and I think what we said was 130 grams. That's one, what's on the label. So it looks like the right amount of Freon went in there. Okay, it's a day later, and the freezer and fridge have been on for overnight. So it looks good. Now let's check the fridge compartment. And here's our settings. So it's working. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video or others in this channel, please don't forget to like and subscribe.